I said I wanted to be in the Beatles when I was really small because that's what I wanted to do. I saw them live at Shea Stadium on the telly and I thought, that's for me. That looks like fun. A drummer. Yeah, from, a, from, from the age of four, five, I can't remember anything else. I just wanted to play drums. Pilot. Test pilot, I think. Because that sounded more glamorous than a mere pilot. But I was colour blind, so I couldn't read. For probably from when I was about eight or nine, maybe ten, I would say I wanted to be a pilot. I wanted to join the RAF and be a pilot. Because where we used to live <clears throat> in this house uh, in Newhome, which is a little village just outside of, um, of Whitby in North Yorkshire, very picturesque visit, village. And our, 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 we had a semi-detached house, but the great thing, the garage had a sunroof, had like a, a metal balcony around it where we used to go and, you know, sit out in. Um, but directly behind the house, there was like a, quite a small valley uh, and the RAF used to use it for training. So they used to fly these like two-seater uh, Hawker jets down this valley behind our, our, our house. And, you know, it's so close and so loud and so exhilarating to, to, to watch uh, that I thought, oh my God, how good would that be? To be that person in that plane flying that jet. So that was, that was my dream all the way probably through until I was about 14 when I realised um, I wasn't going to get the qualifications probably that I needed to, uh, to join the RAF on that basis. I started off by wanting to be a comic book illustrator. I was into drawing and Spider-Man especially and, and, and then, I'd, then I'd sort of morphed into wanting to be something because I realised that sounded a bit, you know, like a, a bit of an unobtainable um, goal. So then I was like, I want, I want to be a draftsman. It sounds a bit more like a proper job, you know. Um, I didn't know what that meant, really, to be honest. Um, and then, um, but I never said I wanted to be a musician. That all happened by accident, really. Um, I tried to become a fireman. Um, I applied for the job and then they turned me down because my eyesight wasn't good enough. Well, who did I ask for my autograph? It's Stefan Grappelli, actually. I, I saw Stefan Grappelli at a place called the Flamingo Club in Plymouth. No, it wasn't. It was in Penzance. I tell a lie. It was in Penzance. And he was there. I mean, he must have been in his 80s at the time. He was probably doing one of the last tours he ever did of the UK. And... Um, and I, and I went up with, because my dad was a huge, it's like, it's Stefan Crapelli, and I'd, I'd, I'd heard the old, you know, Django Reinhardt and Stefan Crapelli, Hot Club of France stuff. And um, so I went up with my dad. I think my dad wanted to talk to him, but he said, can my son have your autograph? So I kind of asked. He kind of asked for me. I think that works. The people that are... Uh I'm huge fans of that have been in the room, same room as several times, like Dave Gilmore. But I would never dream of asking somebody for their autograph, or Peter Gabriel, or Kate Bush, you know, it's like, um, they're the people you admire, uh, but I would never want to be that person. I don't know. I asked Steve Howe for his autograph once, and uh, he was actually quite gracious about it, really, because I've seen him be less gracious to other people. <laughs> um, but that was when I was watching a Rick Wakeman gig at the venue in London, and Steve Howe was in the audience. Um, which is weird, because I didn't think they got on, really. Uh, maybe that was before they fell out. But the most recent autograph that I, I acquired was uh, a drummer called Christian Vander, who, who's a drummer in a, a French band called Magma who I've followed since the 70s. And he's a phenomenal player, um, just an inspiration, just listening to him play for me. And um, he was playing at Lorelei Festival a few years back in Germany. And uh, Lucy was actually at, at that festival. So Lucy got me his autograph. And uh, I've got it at home in a frame. Freddie and the Dreamers, Freddie Garrity, when he played Doncaster Gaumont, 
I had his autograph. And I think there was a Chinese girl called Wei Wei Wong who was quite something in the 60s. I think I had her autograph. How did I go about getting it? I went, went round the stage door, uh, you know, in a mob of, mob of autograph hunters and handed it forward. Uh, he wasn't there, but some guy came along and said, look, if, if you give us the book, we'll get it signed for you, and he brought it back. So Freddy from Freddy and the Dreamers is the only... Oh, I didn't ask Neil Armstrong for an autograph, but he did send me one. Um, just about, he sent me a signed uh, NASA of him in his spacesuit with the moon behind him, which is quite something to have. Monday, Tuesday. Dogs. Dogs. Oh, cats. I like both, don't get me wrong, but I have two cats. So I have to, I have to swear my allegiance to cats. Dogs. Oh, dogs. The best thing about our two dogs is that they make us laugh every single day. I mean, they really do. They do something daft every day. And uh, they're just fantastic. <laughs> I hate musicals. I mean, the only musical I like is Oliver, which I think is a masterpiece. But that's because the songs are great. Do you th I'm thinking Jaws, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Um, you want me to say something really serious, like Apocalypse Now, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the, th <laughs> the th into a musical. Um, Thingy and Adventures of uh, Thingy and Ted. And Ted. Bill and Ted, yeah. Um, yeah, the third version of that into a musical. It nearly is a musical though, isn't it, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Um... Yeah, I haven't got a deep answer for that. That's fine. Jaws is probably Jaws. as deep as you need to get. It's Jaws. <laughs> I'd like to see that, actually. Or maybe I wouldn't, I don't know. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. I don't know. Silence of the Lambs. Oh my God! Yeah. One song. Hmm. A song you couldn't get sick of. Is there such a thing? Um, what do you do? Do you go? Do you go prog or do you go pop? Close to the edge, by yes. Well, because I've been listening to it for well, nearly fifty years, and I haven't got bored with it yet. I don't listen to it that often, but you know, it's one of those songs that you come back to it and I, I still enjoy it. That's an impossible question. Uh, that's kind of an impossible question for me to answer. Uh, you know, there's so many songs I love. I've, I think it would be Good Day Sunshine by the Beatles. I think. I don't really know. That's a horrible question. America, West Side Story. Okay. <laughs> With the Buddy Rich Orchestra. <laughs> well, you get sick of anything, so it'd be a shame, wouldn't it, to, to choose one and, and, and condemn it to, to that. To, to eventual loathing. You've lost that love and feeling. By the Righteous Brothers, maybe. All Come to Look for America by Simon and Garfunkel. 
one one song for the rest of time are real, no, are impossible to answer. Shine on your crazy diamond. Good choice. <laughs> goes on forever. <laughs> yeah, it goes on forever. You won't get bored of it. And the reason I became a musician, listening to that track when I was 15 and deciding, yeah, this is what I want to do with my life. Thanks for watching Marillion's official YouTube channel. Remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification thingamajig so you're the first to know when we upload new content.